Today I have the pleasure of speaking with Mark Smith from Niocorp. How are you today, Mark? Great, Tracy. How are you doing? Mark, I really enjoyed your webcast, your corporate update. I thought it was fantastic. Thank you very much. And I noticed uh, you quoted research analyst Barry Allen from Mackey Research because he said, Niocorp is not the same company after reviewing your updated PEA. Uh, he specifically was probably referring to the fact that your Scandium resource is up 661% or uh, after this. Can you explain how this happened? Yeah, and it's the, uh, the production capability for Scandium is up 661%. And that largely is driven, Tracy, by the fact that we've eliminated the flotation section in our process flow sheet. Um, originally, when we put the process flow sheet, we were very targeted. And it's just the way we, we get as engineers and, and metallurgists, we're very targeted on how to maximize or optimize our recovery of niobium. And through the flotation process, uh, we were sending about 90% of our scandium out to the tailings basin where it would never be recovered again. So, you know, we just kind of started thinking about the value of scandium and the, and the need for scandium in our society right now. And, and it was just a, it was a brilliant thing when one of our metallurgists said, well, why don't we get rid of the flotation section and send all of the resource through the hydromet plant? And then that 90% that we were sending out the tails goes through the hydromet plant, and it's all recoverable then uh, downstream in the solvent extraction process. So it was a, a brilliant move. I'm glad we have a fabulous team of metallurgists here, uh, including the guys from SGS, who have done a, a great job for us. Further to this conversation topic of scandium, I want to stay on this for just a minute because the renewable energy storage market is what we at Investor Intel are calling the new industrial revolution. I mean, it's huge. And I don't think our audience may necessarily appreciate how big scandium is and how big the role of Niocorp is in the global supply. I'd love for you to speak to that, Mark. Well, the, the fuel cell technology is, is what we're focused on, and that can cover a broad range of things, including storage. But the, the, the fact that a company like Bloom Energy has the technology to, to take the fuel cell uh, industry way beyond where it currently is, and their only restriction, it seems, is the supply of scandium, um, we can solve that problem and, and have solved that problem with the changes in our process flow sheet. So needless to say, uh, we are uh, anxious to start our discussions with Bloom Energy uh, and, and I should note, uh, Tracy, that we are talking to no fewer than 10 different uh, people on the demand side for scandium right now. So we are uh, very focused on, on getting those off-take agreements in place for scandium because I, I think that, you know, the, the market and, and our shareholders have, have a legitimate concern that they raise to us that, you know, fantastic numbers in the PEA2, the production of scandium looks terrific you know, where, where's the meat? So we've got to get these offtake agreements in place to show our, our shareholders, to show the market that this is for real. And, and it's really our very humble opinion that the problem with Scandium has not been the demand side, it is the supply side. Supply is what has been restricting the use of this metal, and that's why we're uh, pretty excited about how much we're going to be able to produce. I found, I think you mentioned in your webcast, something about the current global supply of scandium uh, that is being produced only being 5 to 10 million tons. Did I hear that correct? Um, uh, 5 to 10 tons, not million, just 5 to 10 <laughs> tons. And, and I think the actual figure was 7 to 12 uh, that we have cited from our expert who has provided all the background in scandium. But that 7 to 12 has two things that, that cause it to be relatively unreliable. One is that a large portion of what comes out for world production today comes from uh, recycling efforts. And so that's kind of when there's something to recycle, they can produce scandium. If there isn't anything to recycle, you can't produce it. The other problem that we're hearing about in the marketplace as we talk to more potential customers is the unreliable quality of the material. And in some of these higher end technology uses, that quality is very important. So we think we can, we can really hit the problem from both aspects. We'll be producing 97 tons of this material a year, so that's significantly greater than what is being produced today. And our quality will be very reliable day in and day out. It's a very simple process that we use to produce it, so there won't be a whole lot of variation 
in uh, production quality. So what you're basically saying then is that Nile Corp is going to separate, I mean, not only do you have this supply and you've increased your numbers by 661% for what you have for Scandium, but you're cu currently focusing while you're working towards your feasibility study then on your uh, offtake agreements. Is that correct? Absolutely. We think that's the best way to answer any concerns in the market and to further de-risk this project as we move towards feasibility. And de-risking a project is what it's all about as you start heading into the, the really hard thing, which is to get the financing for these projects. So if we have offtake agreements for our products, that really supports the financing and supports the economic model that we're using uh, to justify the project. Another interesting update that occurred with the PEA2 uh, results, of course, was that uh, you increased your uh, uh, niobium, titanium, and scandium. Uh, there's a number of like 80, 80, and 90 percent. Can you talk to us a little bit about that? Because I didn't understand that, and I'm certain uh, that our audience will appreciate uh, your feedback on this. No, it's a great question, Tracy, and we tend to, to overlook those things because we just we do this every day. So it's a great question, and thanks for the opportunity to explain it better. It's basically the elimination of the flotation process, where we were sending a lot of the resource out to the tailings basin, including niobium, about 35% of the niobium, and about 39% of, of the titanium, along with 90% of the scandium were going out to the tailings basin as a result of having that flotation plant. Now we've eliminated that flotation plant. None of those materials report to the tailings basin. All of those valuable products report to the hydromet plant. And when you get into the hydromet plant, that's where your recoveries are always exceptionally high. And we're able to show roughly 90% recovery for scandium and very high 80s, almost 90% recovery for titanium and niobium as well. So they, they will be the best recoveries that we're aware of in the industry right now. So further to the webcast, what I also liked was that you gave your shareholders a, uh, a workplace timeline, what you're expecting to do next. And I'm interested in when you plan on completing your feasibility study, for instance, because I'm assuming you're going to be announcing offtake agreements at the same time since you're, you're aggressively uh, focused on that presently. Well, ideally, if I can, if I can uh, announce offtake agreements before the feasibility study, I will do that. But certainly, uh, our goal is to try to have as many of those in place before the feasibility study is complete as possible. Again, just a further de-risk uh, effort on our behalf, and you know, building confidence in the market that this scandium play that we have in our project is real. Uh, but our feasibility study uh, will be done. Uh, we're we're currently scheduled to have that done by the end of the year. That is a, a roughly two to three month delay from what we said earlier. So we felt it was very important to let the market and let our shareholders know that there was going to be this two to three month delay. But we hope all of our shareholders and the market uh, you know, agrees with us that that two to three month delay to get these types of significantly improved economic figures coming out of this project is well worth the wait. So it will take a little bit longer, but we're still targeting the end of this year and trying to keep everything going on a very aggressive pace. Well, Mark, thank you so much for joining us today. We're looking forward to uh, seeing you present at the Global Technology Metals Market. And I'm wondering if I can get uh, one of those mugs. Absolutely. Consider it in the mail today. <laughs> thank you, Mark. All right. Thanks, Tracy. Bye-bye.